So the graffiti has been done the last week. It's nearly there now at this stage. We've gone for a sleeper design compared to the inside, but there's a few more bits and bobs to finish off, and we're leaving spaces down there for some client stuff as well. Um, but basically, today is Thursday. We were county final on Sunday. So James and Robbie are coaching here with myself. James is going through a full body session. I'm going to get some upper body push pull movements in later just to get the blood flowing and leave it completely at that. And I'll judge, I'll judge the weight off how I'm feeling. I'm going to probably go for like last week's weight and knock off three or four reps of each set because I was doing higher rep sets in this day. And then um, what I want to kind of get across that video though is some training techniques and contraction techniques for stuff like pushing and a pulling movement, which I'm going to be doing because. If you can kind of get this rolling early, that's if you're serious about proper muscle gain, is just going to put that out there. But again, like things like contracting your chest in the bench press, things like being able to contract your lats properly in a lat pull down machine, because that's presumably somebody's doing a lat pull down machine, they're trying to build their back and lats. So while I'm getting this camera ready, one of the first things I ever learned with um, chest training and contraction of my chest is that if you were just standing with your body weight and you have your hand up, can you contract your chest, your pec there, just by standing there like that with one arm? Can you do it with two? So let's just say if I'm here at the top of a dumbbell press, packing my shoulders back, can I, or can you contract your chest there? Because if you can't contract your chest there, how the hell are you going to do that in a bench press, or in a dumbbell bench, for example? So for here, watch, pulling the shoulder blades back and down, having the chest up a small bit, just seeing, can you squeeze your chest? So it's almost like you're, this, the pressure's coming in from the side of your arm, it's small. Bit. So can you contract your chest hard there? And then if you go down and up, can you keep that on? So the easiest way is just grab your hand, grab your fucking chest, and press up and down and see can you feel that. Obviously for the lads training in the gym, we can get down and touch their chest for that. The ladies, we don't do that. So sometimes it's, it might take them a little bit longer to get it, because they have to really see that they feel it themselves. Like. But again, you can, you can see actual contraction techniques. And then over time, is your chest getting bigger or is it not? So that's kind of first simple tip before you actually go into your exercises and stuff like that. But let's just have a look at um, some actual training stuff then. So here we'll take a quick look at James doing a single arm row. And I'm gonna get him even to do like a mini pause at the top now as well. James is well able to do his right and he can get away with doing like faster sets. But if I get him to slow down, to contract, you go pack on the shoulder, you go <laughs> come, come, come pack that shoulder back and keep your lat on. It's almost like getting your lat on and your back on before you go. Like that, just do the chest as well. And when you're keeping that right, you can feel that lat firing every single time and you're working your back properly. We'll have a quick look at a basic lat pull on as well. So for here, kind of the same thing I just showed you with James. Slight lean back first in the lat pull down. Getting that shoulder traction back on before I go, so lats turned on. So like. Even go from here to here when that is on. Whereas 19 people hop in and they start going randomly. So again from here, get set, contract the lats, you can go come on, or come on, great, whatever you prefer. Sometimes I prefer to go come on to get more contraction the back, so lats on. And then from there contract. So again with that one, just make sure you're able to keep the lats firing for every single rep and then slowly increase the weight. Focus on reps more so with that one rather than doing the weight because for a long time I used to get let the ego get in the way and put way too much weight on that pull down and be getting zero contraction or even a tiny bit compared to what you can get when you contract your shoulders back, contract the lats first and really contract them every single time you're pulling that weight down. People get confused with where they're pulling the actual bar that I pull down, but again, I focus on, and we focus on, the contraction you can get in your lats, mainly from it. You can change on different bar positions or where you're going, but like top of the chest is a good guideline because then that allows you to get the most contraction out of it. But again, like if you're coming down and you're able to get a full contraction here, don't think you have to start hopping the bar for chest or any of that kind of stuff. Focus on the contraction first. Robbie's doing a GAA push-up. <laughs> so I'll show you what I mean again with the chest contraction here for a dumbbell bench. So let's say if James is setting up for a regular bench first, let's just have a look at the way he packs his shoulders into the bench, keeps them packed but contracts at the top because 
just focus on that squeeze, massive squeeze there every time. Because a lot of people when they're pressing, they end up trying to press out the way. And they get nothing here. So again, push your shoulders off the bench. Keeping that on, being able to contract every rep, bring them in. You can see it here from James every time. If you're struggling with that, another little tip is you can bring your feet up the bench. Just bring the feet up the bench in front too. <laughs> you can bring the feet up the bench to take out the lower body in it and really focus on getting that chest every time. Ooh. Again, it's just focusing the contraction because when you're getting those higher rep ranges, anywhere from the 8 to 12 rep range, it's hard to keep that on. Keep going, James. <laughs> but again, I'll show you one more now as well with James over in that lap pull down. But there's some small takeaways anybody can put in. Are you going straight into the lats, James? Yeah? Yeah, you go straight into the lats. Again, just like I was saying a second ago, get your shoulders packed, get the lats on from the word go. Just hold the contraction as much as you can to get it, keep getting the squeezing. James's lats should feel on fire now, but again, keep that chest up nice and proud. Keep the contraction going every time. And you should be able to get a lot more out of your training. You can do that, any lower body stuff as well. Um, any pressing, any back moves, any arm moves. Contract the fucking muscle that you're using. Stop being lazy with it. And especially, like, if you're if you're someone who's still kind of relatively new to the, to the gym, getting into it, put these on board now, and a year from now, you'll, you'll see massive benefits from that. Like, But again, this is stuff you need to be doing every single day within your training. I want to use this vlog as a chance, which I'm doing here to answer any questions directly as well. So I'm gonna use it like a contraction techniques video and a Q&A. So there's just some quick training tips I wanted to get across for probably people that are either training a while, it could be a year, two years in the gym, you're still, you're still not doing that right. Pull back the weight, contract the muscle, get more from your training. It's as simple as that sometimes. Um, but again, I know it's hard looking at this in a video and, and going through because it took me a while, and it took me a while to get coached and how to do that right as well. If you're not being there directly coached, the small little things, they can often get lost when you're doing it your own or you, you kind of can go months on end thinking you're making progress, which you will. But again, are you making the best progress you can make, essentially? So, myself and Robbie and James are just back from having breakfast across the road. We were actually sitting down for our first ever three-way like blog critique because the three of us have three blogs in motion now at the moment. And I'm just helping the lads, giving them little tidbits and what they can kind of get across with that because they're on their they're blogging like little tidbits of their own personal journey and some savage takeaways in them, so we're looking forward to getting those out as well. But now, I'm just gonna shoot in a Snapchat which you've seen there and whatever question I get from that today or two, I will use them to finish up with this vlog because I wanna kind of get some more content out with it. And today is recover. We have some stuff to do for Doc Fitness. Again, we're looking at ways of improving the appearance when you come to the gym and stuff like that. So a lot of physical work going on and we're getting finally getting the outside of the building done, which I'm delighted with. We're getting it fixed up, getting it painted, getting the appearance better, a bit more professional looking because it looks like shit. Um, so I'm happy with that. But other than that, it's head down, work as usual. As I said, I'm gonna use this vlog for more um, Q&A stuff. And over these coming days, it's rest and recovery for the county final we have on Sunday. So hopefully the next vlog you'll see will be a positive one based off that. It's update, nearly finished. We went for a green and black uh, kind of contrast here between where the wall cuts off there and black there. I don't know what to make of it to be honest. It's better than what it was, but I don't know if we could have, should have left it all green or not. I don't know. But as I said, it's better than it is. This cannot be walking on for the next three days. It's a bit of a hiccup, but we have everybody walking up the ramp outside, which is dead handy. 
because this used to be an actual old furniture building so it's really really easy to get big equipment in and stuff like that and when you look at the size of the place it's dead easy as well. We were making a few layout changes in here as well um, but we decided to keep the rig where it was that actually wasn't bolted down for three years because we didn't know what we wanted to do with it so we kind of did a temporary job so now it's bolted to the floor we're putting a, lay, a line of mats in there so people can squat on the, that outside and squat on the inside and we can have a full range of stuff going on in here without interrupting that as well and down below we still have a full area in the back that's underutilized a lot but now i'm going to get out the whiteboard to answer that snapchat question i got from darren thank you darren for sending that in in relation to gaining size i think it was when it comes to ga and how we struggling with getting food intake in so i think i'm gonna get the other whiteboard yeah so it wasn't actually a Darren sent me that Snapchat, it was Dennis was his name and the specific question he had was trying to, if you can focus on that, trying to put on size for GAA but finding it hard to fill my calories. I don't eat nuts or butters, any help in your vlog would be great. Cheers and best of luck in your match. Thank you Dennis. But firstly, something that I, the way I would look at this in a viewpoint is, all right, the problem here is calories, size and GAA. Now the first thing you need to distinguish is what is your training goal overall? Like, are you going to be getting bogged down that you're not putting on as much size as you can because you're, let's say, in season hurling and you're getting more stressed out thinking about that than focusing on your performance in the field, for example? Because they are kind of two things you need to juggle with. Once I made that distinction in my own head, you kind of focus more on what needs to be focused on first. So, like, what is a priority to you right now? Um, and that needs to be, like, you need to distinguish that before anything because are you training for performance ga to push that team forward and win the championship or whatever it is or are you kind of going to get lost in the fact you're trying to put in size and then kind of let your performance take a hit because you're you're, you're kind of your mindset's over there and that so again juggling those two things is hard at times if you don't kind of set that in your head and just figure out what's the priority number number one because once you do that it just become a bit easier obviously my priority this year for a lot of it was putting on size first until at the start of the season, then when we got a bit more into it as the weeks and months went on, that's when my head turned to more performance and I knew exactly where we were going. Number two, training. This is a kind of like an elephant in the room where I would put nearly a figure on it, like especially with GAA players, I don't know what it is, I think it's a lot of it's ego and just the pure, the sheer shit training and form that GAA players do uh, is you need to be training right to have an adaptation to put on size in the first place. And 80% of the lads don't even know how to do that. Yeah, you might be squatting, benching, and deadlifting in the gym, but again, I would question things like technique um, and, and volume to drive growth. Again, something that I cannot go into in this vlog, but I would question what is your training like as well. Because if you're, let's say, hurting on the pitch and you're just eating a lot of food, Yes, you're burning off a lot of the calories you're consuming, but you're not really driving other factors for growth there as well. So if you do, if you are putting on weight, a lot of that could be potentially fat gain, which is what you don't want. Um, so again, if you're training right, fine. If, you're, if you're, your training goal started, but you're training hard at the gym three to four times a week, juggling that with your training, calories are going to be, have to be higher because you are burning off such an amount on the field, for example. Like me, I was maintaining my weight, I still am maintaining my weight on 4,000 calories, which is, it's, it's, it's not, I've never been able to do that before. Like if I wasn't on the pitch, that's a different story, obviously, but for me, yes, it is a struggle. I'm not beating myself up about it because right now it's focusing on the performance. After that, that's when I can focus more on size again. Planning, planning when you come back to like planning your weeks in advance, days in advance, so like what day is you on the pitch that week, what days are you going to be in the gym and how are you going to get that food in. If you don't like things like nut butters um, or whatever you put in, was it nuts and butters, who gives a shit, like you focus on how you're going to get your calories in, you need to sit down and write that out for a day in advance and you're already you're 90% ahead of the game with that. Things like high cal shakes are going to come in handy, smoothies, get a protein, get some protein in there, get some oats in there, get some honey in there, fruit, bit of veg, and you have anywhere from a three to 700 calorie shake there, fairly handy. Um, other things like sweets and ice cream will come into it as well, because like you know yourself, ice cream, a bar of chocolates, easily adds 300 to 500 calories as well. It's just an easy way to bump up or top up at the end of the day. So don't be afraid to have those things. Again, follow like an 80-20 rule, 80% good, proper, real whole food, 20% of, uh, let's say, the sweet stuff, calorie stuff, could be, it's fine. Like. So again, that's just kind of, it's more so making people aware 
of lads that want to put on size are hurling, you have to train right number one, which a lot of people don't do not get right. So if you're unsure of where to go with that or get onto even a coach that's local to you, let me know because I might know someone in your area. And number two, determine what is your number one goal right now and prioritize for there because you don't want to get distracted from performance when you're gaining for size and things like planning in advance. So you might say, right, these next four months, We've a chance of winning the championship. We're not going to be, get too bogged down on the gym in the gym performance, more so than the performance in the field. But the second that championship season is over, that's when you can push it hard in the gym until up until you're back and we'll say on the pitch again for performance again. It is hard, but it's not to say it's impossible to do. Like again, it's what you focus on. If you're somebody who plays hard in two, three days, two, three days a week, it goes out every weekend. You're only fooling yourself. Like so, hopefully, Dennis, that was helpful in some shape or form. I'm off now to make myself a high cal smoothie myself before our last training session before our final on Sunday. And uh, that's this vlog over, so hopefully it was helpful. I have nothing else to say. Bye bye. Ah, uh, shut the fuck up. Uh, shut the fuck up.